Kumite. It is a way for practitioners to actually try out their skills learned in Kihon and Kata. Currently, there are numerous types of Kumite such as this, this, and this. However, what if I told you that these variances can all be tracked down into this one book written in 1926? Learn more about the writer and the key points of this book in this video. Hi guys, I'm Yusuke at Karate Coach in Japan and thank you so much for checking out today's video. So, let's go right into the topic. The name of this book is Karate Jutsu Kumite Hen written by the founder of Motoburyu, Motobu Choki. I have previously taken Choki Motobu in one of my videos with the title of The Greatest Karate Fighter Only Practice One Kata, so please check that video out as well. Choki Motobu is a karateka born in Shuri, Okinawa in 1870. Being born under a loyal family, he received the elite training of T, which was the martial art karate derived from. He has also trained under Matsumura Sokon from Shurite, Anko Itosu, the founder of modern karate and the creator of the Pinyan Katas, and Kosaku Matsumura from Tomarite. Some of you might also recognize him from a story of him knocking down a Russian boxer with just one punch. From around that age when he knocked down the Russian boxer, moving out of his village in Okinawa, he started to spread karate in the Kansai region of Japan. With heavy requests from his students, he was halfway forced to organize and write out the world's first book on kumite. Like mentioned before, he was an elite from Okinawa with the ability to write and speak Japanese, which was rare at that time in Okinawa. Okay, let's dive deep into the actual book, Karate Jutsu Kumite Hen. So right off the bat, one thing I wanted to let you guys know is how interesting the title is. First, karate, the way that he wrote it here, is different from how we write it in the modern day, which is this. Karate, how Motobu wrote it, was written as Chinese hands because that was the original form of how they described this art. However, later, Funakoshi uh, renamed it to karate, what we see right now with open-handed, that's the meaning of these kanjis, with the intention of the Japanese government wanting to make the karate into a Japanese martial art rather than the Okinawan one. So that was how the name was different and you can see that the textbook itself has karate, the original one, therefore written a very long time ago. The second interesting aspect is how he added jutsu after karate. Jutsu in Japanese means a technique. Therefore, at that time, karate was not a martial art yet. It was just a way to defend yourself or to attack an opponent. So it was just a, I guess, a conglomerate, um, you know, a group of just techniques. However, later, um, when karate came over to mainland Japan, people started to recognize it as a martial art because there was already judo, aikido, and these Japanese martial art, a way of life. So gradually, you know, karate started to change its shape into a more of like a path rather than just a group of techniques. Well, by the way, I wanted to ask you guys this question. Um, how would you describe your karate? Is it a karate jutsu or karate do? Maybe some of you might only be seeking for the technique itself, making it a karate jutsu. However, some of you might think of it as you know part of your life, maybe something daily that makes you feel better, which is, I think, closer to karate do. For myself, I would say it's like a 50-50 balance. So let me know your ratio. Okay, so within this book, there are nine chapters like this. Chapter one, origin and the meaning of karate. Two, types and history of karate. Three, basic posture and pelvis. Four, rules. Five, about kumite. Six, how to make and practice with the makiwara. Seven, how to punch the makiwara. Eight, kumite. Nine, healing methods. So these nine plus the prologue is what the um, book was comprised of. The ones that stood out to me were these three chapters. Basic posture and pelvis, kumite, and healing methods. Let me start off with number three. You know, since I'm the type of person that think posture is one of the most important points in karate, I was very happy that Motovu also included this in the third chapter actually, which describes that, you know, he put a lot of emphasis on this point. So um, in this chapter, like it's written here, um, let me read the English translation. Um, it's saying that when practicing karate, what you should always keep in mind is basic posture how to put force, and how to set your pelvis. The basic posture that Motobu mentions here is hachijidachi, how you spread your legs apart like this, as a shape of eight. He also mentions the distance between the legs may vary depending on the person, but it should be around nishaku, which was the old way the Japanese uh, measured um, distances. But in um, current meters, that will be 0.76 meters, so 76 centimeters, or in inches, around 30 inches. 
Um, on top of that here, he also adds that you should always um, put your hips down and your st strength on your lower stomach. So stappara, that's how he described it. So on the lower stomach and the weight down. So this is very similar to how we do it, right? You don't want to be floating up in the air. You want to be very rigid, close to the ground as much as possible. Also, I provide private and group lessons online. So if you'd like to check that out, please check it out from this link up above. The first week for the group lesson is free. So why don't you give it a try? Let's continue with the video. Okay, so on to the main chapter of this book, the kumite section. Let's see what kind of combinations Moto will actually put in this book. So he has um, taken some of the combinations that I guess he commonly uses. And let's take a look at the first one. This is the first one. So Motobu, um, this is one way to lead into an elbow strike. So the right side is Motobu and the left side is his student. So step one, the opponent does a left punch and Motobu, what's interesting about his, his um, description is that he sa he's saying here, fukaku, which is go in deeply. Um, this, um, if you do ippongumite, which is a way to you know, do one block and then one strike back, I think some of you might be um, told to, like for ageuke, to not back down, but to go in, right? So very similar point. You don't want to step back for the block, you want to move in and block. And at the same time, you want to hold on to the other person's fist with your other arm. So this is step two, step one, step two. And then step three is grabbing the left arm, pulling it close to you and jamming in your elbow. Um, so this was combination number one. Combination number two that he mentions here is when the guy punches with the left side, you want to hook uh, with your left arm like this, you know, blocking it away. Now with the open arm, as you, as you hook this, now you're gonna bring this down, get rid of the other arm as well, make an opening in the middle, and, and then you're gonna jam your um, knee in. And it also says that you should pull your arm towards you. So, and you can also see how the knee is not aimed to the stomach, but to your groin. Another one is when the guy punches, you block with the left arm, grab the other guy's you know, the balls, and then you know, gah, add some pressure. At the same time, this guy wants to use the other hand to the face, so you're gonna block that, and jam your elbow in. So, it's, you, know, you can also see how everything ends either with the knee or the elbow. And these three are the first three combinations covered um, in this book. So. It's very practical, right? Motobu's um, kumite style. And in the last chapter, healing. Don't you guys think it's very you know, interesting to have this as the last chapter? Remember, this was a kumite textbook and he intentionally put this at the last chapter. Let's see what he says. So, so this chapter, the healing method, is mainly divided into two parts. The resuscitation and fracture dislocation treatment method. Well, reading these two chapters, the second part, uh, fracture dislocation treatment method, um, I think we have a better way of doing it in modern days. Um, so as for the resuscitation, I think it was a very interesting topic. So let me um, describe this within this video. He goes in very detail on about the steps that you should be following. So the steps to when somebody faints is step one right here. Place the fainting person on the back. Untie the chest and abdominal belt. So, you know, strip them off. Push open both sides of the chest and abdomen and use both hands to stroke down several times to fill the air. So now that the person can breathe in and out, raise the back of the head and the patient should be seated flat. The right knee cap should be pressured against the patient's spine and left leg should be kneeling. The patient's head should be supported by the front part of the shoulder clavicle. So uh, what he's basically doing here is um, setting the person up and getting the chin up so that the air is um, kept on flowing through, the, through his own. Um, lungs. The last step is place the left and the right hands below the umbiculus and hold them together. The palm should be used to apply inward and outward pressure. You know, although looking at it from our perspective in 2021, I think there are a lot of mistakes and some things that can be you know, brushed up within this part of the chapter. However, um, I think still um, he understands that he needs to get the air going. You know, if, if the head is stuck like this, you can't breathe. So chin up, right? Those simple things. Um, but if you're a doctor and knows more about this topic, let me know how you should be um, 
um, you know, taking care of the person if he or she faints down. Now, I would really appreciate that as well, so please share it with the community. And it was very fascinating to see this chapter at the end of the book of a Kumite textbook because he understands how important it is for him as a sensei to take care of the students once somebody something you know bad happens to them. So, you know, this chapter or this part of the chapter was very it was a pretty thick part of the book and he dedicated that much time and care into being responsible of his students. So, you know, when we hear Motobuchoki, um, personally, I think of somebody that was like, um, you know, train, 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 train hard. I don't care if you, <laughs> if you die, just keep on training, that kind of sensei. But in reality, it seems like he was a much more caring uh, sensei. So did that change your perspective? Oh, let me know in the comment section below. Yeah, so yeah, that was the overall topics that were covered in the first Kumite book that ever existed in the world. Um, let me know if you found this interesting or if you'd like me to um, explain the other chapters as well, let me know which chapter you'd like to check out. Oh, these are the chapters. And yeah, if you have any other questions, let me know. And don't forget to check these other history videos. I do online group lessons and private lessons. Check it out from here. And I will see you in my next video. Thank you for watching.